we have just two league games left of the season and there is three points separating us and St Gallen. We are going to hopefully win our final two league games and hope that St Gallen lose both of theirs. That's kind of what we need to happen. St Gallen have a superior goal difference. If we win our next game and St Gallen win their next game, it's not over, but there needs to be a fairly hefty swing in goal difference for us to actually catch up. And also, we're playing Servette in the Swiss Cup final. This could be a three-episode end of the season, because if things go well, we might still be picking up the double. It always seems that towards the end of the season, we will play Lugano on camera. And I don't know why, but we are playing Lugano once again. I think we ended last season with a match against Lugano. This is our starting eleven. Harvey Elliott will be in the middle with Hamza Rafia on the right-hand side today. Alan Aragoni misses out due to injury, so we are playing Sam Talili. I think it's Sam Talili. Sammy Talili, apparently. He's German and Tunisian, I think. Sipot has the ball for Lugano. We are 50 seconds in. Lovrich's long ball forward finds Zuba in on goal. His effort goes just wide of Enrico Fleury's post. First chance goes Lugano's way. We need to win this game. And we need to win it comfortably. Almost 20 minutes on the clock and Morea, our former goalkeeper, kicks it long. Agume wins the head. Muheim collects it. Plays it all the way back to Enrico Fleury. Ball forward. Per Scherz is going to go for a little run. Now Agume in front is Elliot Raffia on the right-hand side. Playing kind of out of position, but he's good enough to play there. Dio Brutan goes for a run off towards the right-hand side. We're still missing Brenner. And that was a shot. Was that a cross? It's, it's not the end of the highlight, I can tell you that. It's a big kick up field. Talili heads down for us. Elliot to Hamza Rafia. Talili's carrying on his run. Theo Brutan is in. And Brutan didn't even get it on target. Don't worry. In the summer, we have a brand new striker coming in. We've got like a revolving door policy at the moment of players coming in and out of the club. Because we can't. I can't seem to settle on a really good squad. We are 34 minutes in. Elliot to El Jazawi. Plays it back to Muheim. I really need to get rid of the star on El Jazawi's name. He's played a lot of football for us throughout the save. He spent a few seasons out on loan, but also played a few games in the first season for us. Lasada to Muheim. Back to Kapsavich. Actually, I thought it was going to go all the way back to Lasada. We are stuck in that little corner. El Jazawi collects it. Theo Brutan. So many black Lugano shirts there. We've managed to break three. El Jazawi to Muheim. Three, four, five in the box. Hamza Rafia is one of them. And Hamza Rafia, with a headed effort, makes it 1 0. We take the lead. We go joint on points with St. Gallen. We need to win 4 0. I say 4 0. We actually need to win like 6 0 to wipe out the goal difference between the two sides. Arthur Zagre, another one of our former players playing for Lugano. Lugano are like our B team, aren't they? They're like, well, we're their feeder club. We just give them all of our players who we don't necessarily want anymore. Kapsavich. Ball forward, El Jazawi through ball. Theo Brutan needs to get there first and does get there first. He gets into double figures for the season. We need him to score more goals. He scored 10 goals all season. Brenner had that by the end of August. Muheim with a throw. We are starting to pick up a little bit more speed now, aren't we? Kapsavich loses out but finds Talili. El Jazawi dinks it forward. Can't get it over Jose Massa. Per Scherz left that to Ali Seda and now he's gone off for a run towards the left-hand side. Scherz is keeping up of him. Talili's going over to cover Scherz. We need to get there first. And Agume is the man to get the big head forward. Only as far as after Zagre, though. We need to steal this. We need to steal this. I'm worried that this is going to go in at halftime 2-1. Brutan, I think, is chasing that down. Big kick from the keeper. Per Scherz heads forward. We need to control it. Get the ball on the ground. What are we doing? This ball is all over the place. Ali Seda manages to get past Lasada, And Ali Seda hits it just wide. That was an absolute shambolic highlight, that one was, wasn't it? That was all over the place. Half-time then, 2-0 to Grasshoppers. It's not looking as comfortable as we need it to be. You, you're doing well, you're capable of better. Harvey Elliott can't play as a shadow striker today. Is he just, like, like really just inconsistent? Is that the problem with Harvey Elliott? Is that something that I've just not noticed about him? Because some matches he's superb, other matches he's terrible. Sip up with a throw for Lugano on the hour mark. Adley. Plays it all the way back. Finds Hadrizi. Could be his name. Adley again in the middle is Lovrich. Forward to Chipperfield. Spins and finds Sun, who I think is right back, wearing the number 10 shirt. Pershers comes in that looked like it might have been a handball. Don't know whether it was. Zagre down that left-hand side. He's going to whip the cross and he does towards Sipot at the back post. And that the former Grasshopper's man's header goes over the bar. Right, we are going to do a substitution or three. We're going to do Elliot off for Weyer. 
Tom Mackay. We'll do that, and then we'll do that. That makes a lot more sense. We're also going to do Talili Waro. Nope, we're just with Shurs. Per Shurs for Billing. Billing has played as a centre-back, a central midfielder, and an attacking midfielder now so far for us this season. We might stick him on up front. Maybe put him in goal at some point as well. Kapsevic, ball, finds Muheim. Very good pass as well. Literally seconds after the substitution. And that Muheim's effort is actually saved. I thought he was just blasted over the bar. Rafia, one of our goal scorers, whips in the cross. Can't find El Jazawi or could potentially find him. El Jazawi couldn't do too much with it. Lasada to Kapsevic. I'm not sure why El Jazawi's on the front post for corners. You want somebody like a Lasada or even a Talili because Talili's like 6-1, I think. Tom Mackay collects it, plays it to Talili on the right-hand side. Number two, where are you going to go? Backwards to Agume, loses the ball to Lovrich, tries to win it back, can't quite manage it. We need to get on the end of that. We don't, but we're going to pick this ball up. Lasada to Muheim. Muheim's done very well, in my opinion. He's only on a 6-9, but he's had a lot of the ball. Rafia to El Jazawi, clever ball that was. Four in the box, plays it on the ground to Rafia, has to go backwards. Agume, go for a long-range effort. He does, and it's a superb save from Morea. Rafia with the corner towards the middle. It's cleared by Bergfossen and collected by one of their players. What's going on? I mean, there's so many highlights in this. There are a lot of highlights in this match. Sip up with the ball. Please, somebody steal it off them. I feel like Lugano are going to get themselves a goal and it's going to be a very nervy final 20 or 30 minutes. And Bergfossen heads over the bar for Lugano. They are coming back into this game and we need to try and do something. And by do something, I mean we'll do nothing and hope for the best. Two more subs then. We are bringing on Timothy Weyer as a striker. Petar Pusic is coming on as a right back because basically I brought on Weyer because Brutan's not really done much other than score his one goal. He's done very, very little otherwise. It's Agume with the ball. Plays it to Tom Mackay on the right-hand side. Petar Pusic, the makeshift right back is behind him. On the ground to Tim Weyer. Tries to get some space back to Mackay. Crosses it in. Hamza Rafi is there. El Jazawi is there. And the substitutions seem to have made a little bit of a difference. It is 3-0. And a minute or so later, we've got a free kick in a good position. Rafia is the man to take it. Curling effort hits the bar and it goes over. We are so close to getting back on level terms when it comes to goal difference. We are so close to getting there. Final five minutes. I'm thinking we are going to do our final change, which is going to be Rafia coming off. And uh, what do we even do here? Jaden Braff can come on and we can stick Tom Mackay in the middle. Jaden Braff in the middle. El Jazawi in the middle. Um, we'll go with Braff in the middle, actually. No, we won't we'll go for that. So, Tim Weyer, shadow striker. Braff on the left. El Jazawi is now going to lead the line for the final five minutes. Not even five minutes. Probably spent longer doing that than there is left of the game. Yep, yes, I did. And Lugano's home season, I guess, is over. We win the match 3-0. They actually probably deserved something a little bit more than a 3-0 defeat out of that. I don't care. We've picked up the three points and we've got a little closer with our goal difference as the camera just goes through a stand. On Sunday the 16th of May, we will be playing the Swiss Cup final. St. Gallen will be playing Lausanne, I assume at the same time. So 4.30 kickoff for that. We are kicking off slightly later, so we will know what the situation is. So we're going to go forward to the Swiss Cup final, and we'll see what St. Gallen have got up to as well. Well, the goal difference that we clawed back has now just been changed back to what it was because they won 4-1. We have a small bit of transfer news as well. We've been holding on to him for far too long. Moises Caicedo has returned to his native Ecuador to sign for Emelec. We should have got more money than what we did. We got £875,000. There's like a 20% sell-on in there. Basically, he wasn't playing, was he? We never played him. We played him a few times in the Cup. He got four league games. He was registered this season and still didn't play. So, Caicedo, unfortunately, even though I think there's loads of potential there, just didn't fit the bill. So, for the Swiss Cup final, then, this is our starting lineup. We are having Tom Mackay leading the line. We've also got Julian Aude, a player who we signed in January and couldn't register. He is getting a start today. He's basically been playing every match when it comes to the cup games that he's able to play. So, Julian Aude, we're actually going to see him on camera. We've got a corner early on. Elliot takes it towards Philip Billing. He's hit the bar. It goes over. Still nil-nil, but first chance goes our way. Billing, by the way, he's playing as a centre-back due to fitness concerns. Half an hour on the clock and literally the only highlight came after two minutes with Billings header over the bar. It's, I mean, it's not the most exciting cup final, is it? Talili with a yellow card. Agume also with a yellow card. Talili gets it back. They're passing between the pair of them. Now Persia's across to Billing. 
on the halfway line. Kapsevic, we might not be keeping hold of him this uh, next season. Tom McKay's in on goal. It's a very good save from Jeremy Frick. I think it's Jeremy. Half time, it's nil nil. It's uh, fairly boring, isn't it? Right. Um, those fans have been fantastic. Sure, didn't work. So Mackay, Elliot, Ald. I guess those are the the three poor performers. Agume is not doing too hot either on a six six in the middle of the pitch. Now I was expecting this would be a very long episode, what with three matches and the end of the season, but this match is going to be about forty seconds. 70 minutes on the clock. We've got a free kick in the, basically a corner position. Billing another chance, heads over the bar. To be fair, he shouldn't bother jumping. If he didn't jump, he might have get, got that on target. This has been absolutely horrendous. Julian Ald is coming off. Dominic Schmid's coming on. Tom Mackay is coming off for Brutan. We're also going to do Kapsevich for Bastian Toma. There we go. I think as well, because it's the cup, that might be all of our subs. We might not get any more. We have an XG of 2.12. And it's still nil-nil. We've got two minutes of normal time to play. Jeremy Frick with a goal kick for Savet. A team who, by the way, are almost relegated. El Jazawi collects it on the left-hand side. Three in the box. Crosses in. Rafi is one of them. And Hamza Rafia heads over the bar. All of our highlights have been headers. Three minutes of injury time. Hopefully enough time for us to score a goal. I don't want to go to extra time. I really don't want to go to extra time and penalties, potentially. Elliot to Talili in the penalty area. Four in the box. Deschamps with a good slide tackle. It could be a penalty. I'm almost certain Talili was in the box when that happened. So if that's just given as a foul, and we're just checking to see whether it's inside the penalty area, I think it will be. It's not a penalty area. He was outside the box. Well, at least we get the free kick that we don't get to see. And now it's extra time. Really? We've got an XG of 2.35. An XG of 2.35... And we haven't scored a goal against a team who are effectively relegated. I think they're second from bottom. Talili on the right-hand side. Rafi is not going to quite get there. And Savet can now possibly get it upfield. They're not even trying. They are basically just trying to not lose. Which doesn't make sense. It's a cup final. Schmid to Bastian Toma. El Jazawi on the left. Three in the box. Schmid gets it again. El Jazawi. Where are we going? We're going the wrong way, guys. Schmid to Toma. Forward to Elliot. Little flick, please, or something. Get it through. Elliot's going for a wander. Schmid, facing away from goal, finds Bastian Toma, all the way back to Agume. Right-hand side's an option, or we can pass it to one of their players. And if we do not win this game, this is just disastrous. This is an outrage. If we don't win this game, I'm not going to be happy. Because I can't see us winning the league, and I want to be winning something every season. Brutan's in on goal. That's a superb finish. Goes over the bar. I think he might have been offside anyway. XG of 2.5 now. Um, six shots on target. This is the problem. 105th minute. Rafia plays it back to Talilia Gume. Gets it now. All the way back to Persher's and Billing. Down towards El Jazawi on the left-hand side. Dominic Schmid can go for a run. The substitute with a bit of fitness. Finds Theo Brutan. Oh my god, he's never going to score. He's never going to score. How has he not scored that? That's pushed our XG up to basically three now. It's like 2.95. Harvey Elliott with a free kick. Can he save the day? Curling effort. He's hit the bar as well. What is going on? Into the second half of extra time. I'm going to do a sub um, because all of our attacking players are just, they're done. They're absolutely done for. What, what have we got? Jaden Braff for El Jazawi, I think, is the one we're going to go for. Um, I guess we, can we do that as well? We can do that as well. Right. Okay. Can we also do Talili for Lasada? We, we can also do... Really? We could do all of those subs? Fair enough. So the subs haven't quite happened yet. El Jazawi with the ball. Goes for an effort. It's deflected and it's gone off for a corner. I imagine now the subs are going to take place. They are and we don't get to see the corner. So we've got Pusic, Braff and Lasada all coming on. We've got an XG of 3.5 and we're going to draw 0-0. Petar Pusic's corner towards the middle. Easily cleared. Agume collects it though. Pusic again with the ball. Back to Agume, now Lasada, Bastian Toma, Jaden Braff. Oh my word, we've got six shots on target out of 495. How has that gone to penalties? Really, how has this gone to penalties? Oh, just do, 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 do sports. We're going to lose this game on penalties, and I, I don't even want to watch. First chance is actually saved by Enrico Fleury, straight down the middle. Right, I'm a little bit more confident now. Big Philly Billing. Philly Billing steps up, left-footed, from the six-foot-six centre-back, also straight down the middle. Like to point out, Billing is our best penalty taker. 
Ulrich has just scored the penalty for Servette. So Harvey Elliott, our second best penalty taker, steps up, blasted it into the back of the net. Good. Number three for Servette into the bottom corner. Now, I hope that Servette have the similar problem to us, where we don't have any good penalty takers. They're all pretty poor. Akume's penalty straight down the middle. Luckily, it goes over the goalkeeper. Agume's penalty ability is like 9. He's not very good, but he's our third best penalty taker. So I imagine theirs are just as bad. It is 3-2 to Savet. I mean, if Billings miss penalty at the start is the downfall of us, he should be scoring them every single time. Petar Pusic steps up. Good penalty from the substitute. So it's now down to the final penalty of the five to start with. Deschamps steps up. Left-footed penalty. From the man with the yellow card, sends up into the bottom corner, it's 4-3. There is a lot of pressure now, and I don't even know who it's going to be on. Why does my brain tell me it's somebody I don't want taking penalties? It's it's Bastian Toma. Do I want Bastian Toma taking penalties? Right-footed then from the Swiss international. We've lost the cup final. We've lost the cup final. Oh my word. We had an XG of 3.5. We had six shots on target. I don't want to see this nonsense. Um, that's unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. How did we not even score in that game? Let alone win 24 shots. An XG of 3.64 and we lose on penalties. That is awful. That is absolutely awful. Let's put the cup final to the back of our minds. It is the final game of the season. We have to win. There is, there's no two ways about it. We have to win. And we have to hope Winterthur can beat St. Gallen. Winterthur are down in 7th place. I don't have high hopes for this. So the final game then, we are we're basically playing the strongest line that we can possibly play, which it's not great. Um, Alan Aragoni's actually missed the final, what, six, six or so games of the season? I think he's dislocated his shoulder. So yeah, it's not going to be the easiest game against young boys. They are, well, they've finished fourth, haven't they? We need to keep an eye on what's going on in the winter third game. But realistically, you'd have to say that Winterthur are probably going to lose. Let's pop the league table there as well so we can keep an eye on it. Emery with a free kick for Young Boys. It goes and hits the post and Kapsevic clears it for a corner. Corner to be taken then. Emery is the man to take it towards the front post. Martins collects. Emery crosses it in. It's well saved. Lasada clears it. Harvey Elliott with a big smash upfield as well. Straight into another highlight though. Kronig to Ryder. Plays it back to the throw taker Kronig. Down the line, possibly. Being hustled by Hamza Rafia, I think it is. Now it's Cindy Lauper in the middle. Haas with the ball. Plays it back to Lauper. Forward to Ryder. Oh, young boys are going to beat us, aren't they? Young boys are actually going to beat us. And it's and then Winterthur are going to beat uh, St. Gallen as well. And it's going to be our fault that we didn't win the league. Can I just point out, if the season didn't have St. Gallen and we ended on 77 points... We would have won the league last year and the year before that. Literally every single season has been won with 77 points or less. And St. Gallen have just decided that they are going to be a ridiculously good team. Still nil-nil in their game though. We do need to do something. There's been five shots in this match. There has been five, maybe six shots. No, five shots. And that's it. This is awful. What's going on? Rafi is on a 6-2. Every... Oh, we've given up. We've absolutely given up. St. Gallen have taken the lead as well. It's going to be over. We're going to finish six points off the top of the table unless we can do something a little bit special. Schmid with the ball down the left. Stops, holds up play. Harvey Elliott collects it. Play it in the middle, please. There we go. Kapsevich is the man. Ball down the line. El Jazawi. Brutan's in the middle, but El Jazawi completely loses the ball. We've got it back, though, and it's coming back forward. El Jazawi towards Rafia on the right-hand side. Five in the middle. El Jazawi's one. And Moed El Jazawi makes it 1-1. You're celebrating like we've won something. It's a 1-1 draw. Now what we want to see is Winterthur equalise as well. That would uh, that would that would please me. That would cheer me up. In fact, what we've got is St Gallen have taken the lead. I say taken the lead. They doubled their lead. We're going to pick this ball up. Brutan's collected it. Romano Schmid with the goal for St Gallen makes it 2-0. So they are surely going to be crowned champions of Switzerland. For the first time since 2000, Harvey Elliott is in there making it 2-1. So we are now starting to do our job. We just need Winter Third to score three. And then we also need to score maybe six or seven more to try and wipe out the goal difference. I think we're starting to get back into this. We're starting to become the grasshoppers that we know we can be. 
Ball forward from Elliot finds Al Jazawi. First touch isn't the best, but it does not matter. Tucks it past the goalkeeper. It's now 3 1. Three substitutions as well. We're going to do Joan Khan, Pusic, and Tom Mackay coming on. Talili, Brutan, and Rafia all coming off. None of those are playing any good. We've also got Agume playing badly. Lassard is not playing well either. But we, we can't. There's not a lot we can do, basically. We're just now keeping an eye on what's going on in the winter third game. And let's be honest. Winter third are seventh place in the table with nothing to play for. They're probably not going to do much. The full-time whistle goes here, and the fact that we are not celebrating comes to show you that, yes, we did not win the league, but at least we won the final game of the season. Finishing the season on 80 points and not winning the title is a bit nuts. So confirmation there. Then St. Gallen are champions with 83 points, their first title since 2000. So 27 years in the making, that title has come to them. Second place. Today, we have been the bridesmaids, haven't we? We have lost in the cup final. We have lost in the league. We've won nothing this season. Is this the first season since we started where we've won nothing? I think it probably is, isn't it? We've won things fairly consistently. We've only won the Swiss Cup once. Uh, we've won the league, what's that, three times now. So, we're. it's disappointing, but in a way, hear me out, it's quite encouraging that St. Gallen have been so much better than all of our other competition for the last few seasons. Let's take a quick look at the end of season awards then. Signing of the season goes to Danielson Lasada for um, under a million pounds. He has been superb and I think he might be leaving in the summer because there are a lot of big teams sniffing around him, potentially offering sort of 10 million pounds, which is a huge amount of money. Brath was very good. Matic surprisingly played seven games. Um, basically, Fleury got a lot of illnesses. Um, Harvey Elliott, A+. Plus. Really? I guess 10 goals, 8 assists actually doesn't sound too bad. He's just so on and off performances. Schlotterbeck didn't really play. Talili played a fair amount. They're not too impressed with him. Um, I played him because he's 19 and costs £3.5 million. Julian Ald, they're very happy that we spent £7 million on a player who couldn't play for us. Fair enough. Uh, Smaljevic, he, he went out on loan and then I recorded him and we couldn't play him. Uh, Fabian Schar, they didn't like that one at all, which is fair. So ultimately... The league was not good, the cup was not good, the Champions League was not good. We've had a poor season. We've actually had a very poor season. We are going to need to take a look at the coefficients in a second as well. Oh, that's not good reading. Everything is down. Sponsorship is down by £12 million. Over half of our sponsorship has gone. Prize money is halved. Lots of things have just been absolutely wiped out, I imagine, due to poor performances in the Champions League. There's our overall starting 11. I mean, the Brenner deal. The Brenner transfer is the thing that's killed us, isn't it? We've got in 26 million for him, but that's a problem. Danielson Lasada had a good year by the looks of it. So let's finish off then looking at the coefficients, and I still think it's been good. I do think it's been good, but not because of us. So we're losing a 4.75, picking up a 9.2. We move up to 7th place. We actually move up to 7th place, which doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything at all, does it? It's going to be exactly the same. But we have climbed up slightly. Next season is the big one. Next season, we have to improve on a 10. We have to do really, really well, which means we are going to be in the Champions League qualifiers. And arguably, we don't want to get into the Champions League. We want to drop down into the Europa League and just win every game in the Europa League. That's what we want. St. Gallen straight into the Champions League as well is pretty massive. That is going to do it for this episode and this season. Thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy. Do please remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I think we've got time for one more season with Grasshoppers. I'm annoyed we can only do one more season, but I think we've got enough time for one more, so I'll be back with another season of Building a Nation with Grasshoppers. Thanks for watching.